welcome to week two of Talking Vertical. Um, today's subject is we're going to talk a little bit about our different journeys into the climbing in- industry. Uh, yeah, this um, is Liam. This is Liam. This is Rich. Richard. Are you a yeah. Richard or a Rich on this? Either, either or. We'll go Richard because it feels yeah. professional. Yeah. Um, yeah, and kind of like how you as a listener might want to get into into the climbing industry. Yeah. Um, I guess we're going to start with our stories again. It's not always just going to be us talking about ourselves. This yeah. is episode two of me and Rich talking about ourselves. Yeah. Um, to change it up, I'll go first. As I mentioned in episode two, episode one, if you haven't listened to episode one yet, go back and listen to it now. The link will be somewhere on the internet. Um, I started climbing five years ago. And I started my climbing journey of career literally like two weeks later. I started working in a local climbing centre. I just literally asked them, could I be an instructor? Um, For some reason they said yes. Then over the course of that year, I kind of learnt the skills. Um, I did my qualification actually a lot later than that. um, Because at the climbing centre I worked at, you didn't need to be qualified. And I think we'll talk about that. That's a a good thing to to Juicy subject. Um, But over that course, I then carried on working in the climbing industry, different centres, got qualified a year after I started instructing. So I had a fair amount of experience under my belt. I I passed the qualification pretty easy. Um, Again, we'll probably talk about that. Fast forward to today, I actually continued my career in just generally teaching. Um, I now run a sports coaching brand and I did sports coaching at university. So my climbing journey has shifted into that. And also launching a climbing coaching brand on the side of that and all that sort of stuff. Um, But I feel like we can dig into that. Um, That's kind of where I came from and that's where I am now. Um, Cool. You talk now. Yeah, so I got into climbing mostly at uni and then a year later because I was part of the uh, committee at Bournemouth Uni. I was also made an instructor so we could safely turn the freshers that were coming along into climbers. For those of you who don't go to to university, that's new people. Yeah, new people to climbers safely. Um, I was more than happy to do it. Just guesswork, but the uh, climb wall uh, kind of expected us to know what we were doing. Um, From there, I got a job as a climbing instructor in there. Um, but like you said, it was based on a site-specific qualification rather than a nationally recognised qualification. Um, uh, going forward, that will I sort of did it as a side job for about four years. That will close down. I found another side job along my uh, other job at the time where I dabbled a little bit, but didn't like did it sort of every other week for a couple hours um yeah and then took a year year out from basically life in general and when did a bit of traveling came back went back to my job and kind of went nah this isn't the industry i wanted to work in so yeah my job outside climbing and i was like what do i want to i want to work in climbing so i moved to a place where i can become more involved in the climbing industry is that where you're at now or? uh yeah 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 um your your story is a little bit different because what mm. do you actually do now in the climbing industry so i i manage a, i currently manage a cafe uh a climbing wall um yeah um but i do a bit of coaching and um climbing instructing on the side and i'm working on my tickets getting a lot as many qualifications as I can in climbing coaching climbing instructing yeah I think that's probably the next place to jump Mm. onto is whether you actually need to be qualified to be working in the industry like we're talking about climbing instructing here um there are other jobs within climbing other careers but I think that's probably Mm. from my knowledge of the climbing industry it's probably the Mm. biggest area you can make money from starting oh yeah yeah Um, it's definitely without being like a pro level climber um, well the best 
I think if you're pretty adamant, you want to be a uh, working in the climbing industry. Best thing to do is work in a climbing industry. You don't need qualifications. Just get a job on reception. Get a job in it. Get a yeah. Just work in whatever. Work in a outdoor store. So you're. Yeah. That's that's sort of how it starts. Um, I think that's a not having the qualifications and a touchy subject. I think being a person who delivers coaching and instructing on a daily basis and has people who deliver with me, um, not having a qualification is actually almost a goodness that I quite like people who don't have a qualification. Um, I think one of the people who taught me through my climbing instructing journey said that you only actually need a qualification for one thing in the UK and it's something like open heart surgery or something like that. So actually, legally, we don't have to have qualifications. Um, I'd be intrigued to know your view on whether you think people should get qualifications or whether they could just work on a site specific throughout the well, of their career. Well, I think I think standardising the industry is probably quite, quite good. Um, because if you know you go into if you go to a center and you know that that center says that every member of staff who is going to teach climbing is CWI, you know you're going to get a certain. Le- For those of you who are not climbing, is the yeah. climbing wall instructor. That's the not the first level of climbing instructor, but it's the first level of climbing instructor where you can deliver climbing as a sole person. Yeah. You don't need to be supervised. Yeah. Um, yeah, and you know you know you've got a um, level of expertise from every member of staff you get. I think when I started teaching, it was the norm to have site specifics um, because when I started teaching climbing, the only nationally recognised qualification was SPA, which is Single Pitch Award, which was an outdoor qualification but used to um used as a competency qualification for indoor climbing but it wasn't actually designed for that um but now the industry's sort of been catching up it's been evolving to meet the current needs yeah the current needs and i think that's a really good thing as if you're looking to work in the climbing world having that qualification allows you to work at any climbing wall Whereas when I first started, I could only work at that group of climbing mm. walls and there was only one locally. Whereas now you could work, if you if you live in somewhere like Bristol, yeah. there's five or six walls or something, you yeah. could work at any of those and they would know that you're employable. Um, yeah. I think, I think it makes a much easier pathway for someone who wants to get into climbing. It might be more challenging because now you've got to get a qualification before you get a job, whereas when I got a job at the um, climbing wall at my uni, it was a case of they put me through the site specific and then I had a job. Um, I think but, some of those jobs still do exist, but less, yes. less so in some of the new yeah. walls. Um, saying that, the qualification, did you find it fairly, I don't want to say easy, but it, it does It does make sense and it's not, it's not like becoming a doctor or something. No. It's a fairly sensical i think yeah well it's Um, as long as you know how to be safe in climbing and you can oversee people doing it the way to really fail it is only to demonstrate that you're not safe um that's pretty much the idea i got from it is like when i actually did it i was like yeah i should have done this years ago this was pretty standard Mm. for mm. for my experience level mm. um like that we're just talking about the entry level qualification which we both hold mm. there is like a whole plethora of qualifications we could talk about but we won't necessarily bore you with those because yeah we could be here a long time um i think an interesting thing that i kind of look at is that once you get that first qualification it kind of has um it, it sets your parameters of what you can work but those parameters are pretty free. Like you're delivering NICAS, which is the National Indoor 
yeah. climbing scheme, which is great for kids, whereas I'm actually delivering adult pathways. Um, mm. And they're very different things, but yet we both can deliver with them. So yeah. don't think that because you're doing your qualification, that one qualification doesn't mean that you're going to do what a lot of people think is birthday parties for the rest yeah. of your life. Um, which you might have to do the odd climbing birthday party at the start of your well, career. Generally, yeah, you got you got to go through the the sort of hard work if you want to. Yeah, like any progress career, on. There's, there's yeah. definitely hard work. Um, and um, birthday parties are quite the money maker in the climbing industry. So they are they are what you make them. Like with all with all the climbing work I've ever delivered, is that like we said in episode one with a quick question that climbers are generally quite nice most people who come to a climbing session have come to you to want to climb so yeah. if you put loads of fun in and have loads of fun with them that actually you can you can make your day job go from oh no i've got eight hours of climbing courses today to on my days i get to have fun yeah. with people all day long yeah well i think i think that's that goes on to quite an interesting point about a lot of people's idea of like a climbing instructor is one to one with an adult who really wants to progress at climbing harder, and that's quite a misconception of what climbing instructing is. Um, there are those gigs where you do have that um, sort of one to one teaching one person, trying to develop them, trying to actually do some proper coaching, but the the bread and butter in the climbing industry and especially for instructing is group groups of both kids and adults giving them a go at climbing and it's that entry into climbing first climbing experience or second climbing experience is really there's a lot of that as well yeah. isn't there? in terms of like do you feel um i guess people i'll probably title this something like making a career out of climbing do you feel that being a climbing instructor can be a full-time career um, in terms of just just from a money side of sense, because um, that might be something you're worried about coming into climbing is that actually as an instructor I'm at in the end, I'm just picking yeah. a figure five pound an hour because I'm at the bottom yeah. of the tree. I've only got the, the entry level qualification. Um, yeah, yeah. You don't you don't go into climbing instructing to make big bucks, like yeah, yeah. Um, you could end up making big bucks with the journey that climbing instructing takes you, but the fact of the matter is, is climbing instructing, there's loads of people who want to do it, so it's not a crazy high paid industry, and it's also kind of like a passion job, um, so it, it isn't going to be crazy pay. Yeah. I mean, but you can... Um, you can earn enough to live off. You can fund definitely the climbing lifestyle that some of you mm. listening may know about. Um, we're going to probably touch about that in another episode about what it is to have a climbing lifestyle. Mm. Is it having a van, blah, blah, blah. But um, you can definitely fund that. It's worth noting that as a climbing instructor, you won't always be on the bottom dollar. Um, as an example, my current rate with one of the sentences I work at is £15 an hour, um, yeah. depending on what I deliver. And there are... There's work over there in the summer period with centres like that that is, there's eight hour days all yeah. week. So I'll let you do the maths. It's possible to earn, there is possible to earn a, a vague amount of money. Yeah. So like there's another qualification called uh, RCI, which lets you teach climbing outdoors. And usual day rate is 200, can be up to 200 pound a day, um, depending on what group you have um so it's it's by no means by no means a low like a poorly paid industry but you you gotta have other reasons than just financial to yeah. do it you you touched on like where somewhere in there about like the climbing journey can arrive at big bucks like yeah well like, like i'm intrigued just myself i kind of want the big bucks um where would you like i've got examples of of that um i can think of a few but i don't really know the details so i wondered if you um well there, there are people who who do make a lot of money from climbing 
because it's growing it's growing industry and there are there's always going to be people at the top um of any industry who are making money be it in coaching yeah you got you got really high paid coaches i guess people um, in climbing centers are probably yeah. going to be doing fairly all right in sort of 10 years time um yeah well i think i think climbing centers can be a money maker but it's it's hard work opening a climbing wall i've, I've met a few people who have opened climbing walls and there's a few people who think they should be well before they opened the climb wall they thought they'll be taking home more money than they are now but they're still doing it they're still grafting at it and they're still enjoying it um and just that, being in that community i guess that's another point that we've talked for the last 10 15 minutes about climbing instructing but there's more than just becoming a climbing instructor yeah in the climbing world um you know, from the centre, you can do... Um, root setting. Root setting, yeah. I was going to say admin yeah. for a climbing centre, which is a yeah, really, there's really boring example, but like, root setting. Mo- most climbing walls have a, res- a reception manager, uh, sort of some sort of instructor, um, coaching manager, cafe manager like myself. Um, Staffing management. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so there are there are depending on what your skill set there are opportunities to do it. That's not just instructing; it's just that's what we we've experienced. Um, um, and on the flip side, like I'm starting to push into creating videos and stuff for climbing, hmm. and climbing photography is pretty big. Um, most of you have probably seen the film Free Solo or Dawn War, like. It's yeah. called Free Solo, isn't it? The Alex Arnold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's a huge film, and you can that's all climbing industry. So, like it says, it depends about your skill set. Yeah, and it's definitely expanding as well in terms of the opportunities you can get. Yeah, climbing. yeah. Um, we should we should get someone on who's worked elsewhere. Yeah, maybe in the creative part of climbing. Yeah, um, I'm out, I might have someone in mind. Yeah, um, cool. Um, and like there is there is the ultimate job in climbing where you are literally paid to go oh, go climb <laughs> yeah, that's a really like, good point. i mean we've talked all about this <laughs> stuff but you've got to be at that high end of climbing to really be paid you've got to either be doing the the most um radical routes um most event like the most adventurous climbs like climbing some of uh, those, what are they called in Venezuela, those Spiky flat things. tops. No, no, flat top. Oh, like in the jungle. Yeah, yeah. In the jungle and like that at mad British guy does it. Yeah. Um, uh, ginger beard. I'd, yeah. <laughs> Pop up face now on video. Yeah. Um. Um. I think they're called tapues. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think they're called tapues. Yeah, mm-hmm. climbing those. I guess right. being a an adventure explorer yeah. all sits into that well you could go down like Alex Honnold made a name for himself for just climbing without a rope and mm-hmm. oh. that there's very few people who would <laughs> reasoning for that who'd, uh, who'd be willing to do that but that that's what you've got to do you've also got to be, be good at marketing yourself um, yeah I think that's quite an interesting point yeah. within climbing that if you want to do sort of become well call them i would call them professional climbers but i yeah. guess we're professionals in the climbing industry yeah professional climbers making money purely from climbing yeah. you don't just have to be really strong and really good at climbing yeah look at adam andre he's recently started his own youtube um series he's had like pretty well success with that he's creating this whole this whole Andre brand mm. uh, chris sharma's a massive yeah massive example of that but uh, the thing to remember with like all these youtube videos all this instagram is like you don't see the work that's going on behind the camera like the, these people are having to work hard it's not it's not a walk in the park like there's for every one that makes a career as a professional climber they'll be like loads of others who just just can't get it to work mm-hmm. um can't get the sponsors can't get 
I think that's hence that's why well, coming full circle back round that we started this conversation yeah. with probably the easiest yeah. avenue unless we've missed something in our climbing yeah. industry careers of getting yeah. involved with the climbing in the climbing market and in, in the climbing career is hence we started with climbing instructing we did actually plan probably doesn't sound like that that's probably a nice place to go to yeah um cool but um to to end and end this conversation for me is like if you want to work in the climbing climbing industry get a job in it's as simple as get a job in the climbing industry and show the person who gave you that job that you want to do more in the climbing industry most people in the climbing industry will help you progress yeah they want you to they yeah. we're all nice people um and also don't be afraid to quit if you don't like your yeah. nine to five job like we know plenty of people who have been office workers have absolutely mm. hated it um they've quit their nine to five job they've ended up working climbing instructing maybe not for the same money but they definitely look a lot happier than yeah. they did yeah. when they didn't do so yeah um there we go cool thanks thanks for watching yeah. I feel like I should shake his hand. It's probably <laughs> probably not the thing you do on no. a podcast. Again, for those who are listening, you obviously can't see me put my hand up and awkwardly stare at Rich. Um, thanks for listening, guys. That yeah. was episode two of the podcast. Talking called, Vertical. Talking Vertical. Nearly called it something else. Um, that is, is probably trademarked. Yeah, so that name might be disappearing shortly. I'm not sure how we'll deal with that. As always, guys, your comments... What you let us know, feedback-wise, is going to be our oxygen for driving forward. This isn't about what me and Rich really want to talk about. We're trying to pick stuff that you want to hear. Yeah. So hit us up on socials. Um, they will probably be around. It will most likely hit us up on my Instagram, which is LKS Adventures. Do you want to share your Instagram? Yeah, on Fox on Instagram, <laughs> I think. Um, he's not sure. Yeah. Um, if not, we we will share our other hashtags, no, um, climbing things. On. And I'm sure we can show in the show notes, like all yeah, 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 stuff. the comments. That's what I was yeah. looking for. So share what you think, what you want us to hear, and we'll hear you next time. Cool. Bye. See ya.